So as many know, uh, Jason Salvaggio, one of the draft eligible prospects, um, his older brother and I are good friends. And I, you know, we had the draft here obviously together, and um, I was going down anyway, and obviously they were going down anyway, him and his family. So we met up in New York. Saturday night, went out to dinner, we had a good time, and then, um, you know, I met him before the draft, and then I, I was upstairs, and they were, you know, with the, the prospects eating. And um, after the third round, I, I texted his brother, and I went down and I sat with him. And he, I projected him in the fourth round. Maybe I had him rated a little higher than he should have gone, um, but I thought, you know, fifth round at the latest. And uh, so I said, you know, it's going to be pretty good. And selfishly, I'm kind of thinking, oh, great, I'll get a great um, clip of him getting drafted. It'll be it'll be awesome. It'll be great for the show. I get the interview, which I, I get here. And, um, you know, so I said, you know, selfish. It, it was good. And his brother and I are good friends. We were talking hockey. We were making fun of a few coaches walking by that, you know, I'm, neither one of us are fond of. But um, this, you know, that's, that's our friendship in a nutshell. But so the, the picks keep coming by. And, you know, with every pick going, oh, you know, how cool would it be if L.A. drafted you? Or, you know, you, you went to Edmonton with all those young talents. Now, obviously, he's playing in the USHL next year and then UNH. So he's not anywhere close to the NHL yet you know, in terms of getting there right away. But, you know, we're all talking about different scenarios, you know, Vancouver and, and you know, the Chicago Blackhawks, Virgil Six, the Hunt Cup champions. And then the picks just kept coming. You know, the fourth round ends, the fifth round ends, sixth round, you know, what, what's going on? And then, um, you know, the, the sixth round goes by, and now it's like the last 30 picks. And, you know, the, this humor we had kind of going on wasn't there. And with each passing pick, you know, the the weight and, you know, in the, this place we were sitting was, you know, it was getting heavier, you know, you just feel it was a tense air, and, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm not in the family, so I, I really was kind of as an observer at the same time, and I was videotaping all the picks, you know, for, for this documentary, and it, it was just, he was sitting a few seats away, so it was kind of, I don't want to get him in there, I felt like I, I insulted him doing it, but, you know, every pick just kept coming and coming and coming, finally, you know, it was like five picks left. Four, three, two, one. Chicago with the last pick. They draft one of the Swedish kids. And just the, the what I saw was just the raw human emotion that TSN doesn't show. You know, you, you see McKinnon or, you know, even the guys later in the draft, you know, Miles Bell, um, you know, Greg Gage, Allison, those guys like that, you know, they get drafted later on, you know, they get to put the jersey on, and, you know, I want to thank my family and my coaches and all this other, you know, happy stuff, and for the kids that go to the draft and don't get drafted, now, I mean, my, as much as, you know, I feel bad from everything, you know, it's it's nature of the beast, you know, you, there's no crying in baseball, you know, not everyone gets a trophy, That that's, that's a given. But at the same time, you can't help but feel, like, awful, you know, to, to see a kid that works just as hard as everyone else that was supposed to have his name called, not get his name called, is like, you know, like I said, that that's part of this, to say Silver Lining isn't, for the Silver Lining for him is, you know what, Marty San Luis, Dan Boyle, you know, guys like that have, have been great players, and undrafted collegiate free agents. He, he's draft eligible next year, but, you know, then, you know, you look at Matt Gilroy, signed a great contract with the New York Rangers, undrafted free agent. You know, it, you, you can leverage it better, but, you know, you, you don't want to see that. And the silver lining, they, this is the part of it I wouldn't have gotten had I gotten the media pass. I never would have gotten this story. I mean, I would have, you know, seen Nick and said, you know, hey, you know, your brother didn't get drafted and stuff, you know, it's awful, but I would have never seen the human emotion here, and he was visibly upset at the end of it, and a scout walked by the stairs, and, you know, it's one of the other scouts, you know, who's, who's the kid over there that's, you know, upset, who, you know, who was he, you know, where did he play and everything, and, um, you know, it's not the end of it, I mean, it's, you know, he's going to use his motivation to go forward, I think he's going to be, you know, he's going to turn some heads next year in the USHL, but, um, to, to sit through seven rounds and not hear your name called, that, you don't see that otherwise. You know, you always hear about kids that don't get drafted, you know, Connor Rankin, Sergei Tolchinsky, a few other guys um, that were projected to go and didn't go. Um, you know, you, you read about that in the paper, and I know Tolchinsky skating at the Rangers camp this week, July 2013. Um, so, you know, there's that, but you don't see it. And um, I'm glad I got to see that, and I think that really put the human, these aren't, you know, superhuman hockey players, these are kids, you know, these are 18, 19 year old kids, and, you know, it was, it was pretty eye-opening, 
and uh, that was this is probably the, the toughest part of the draft. Here's the interview I did with him before the draft. You know, you can see he's visibly kind of tense, but at the same time, he's jovial, knowing that you know this is what you work for your whole life. And um, you know, to this is probably at you know two thirty on draft day. Draft ends at a ten o'clock, so who, you know, then in the ensuing seven and a half hours, so much goes on and everything. And um, you know, I know it's, it's going to work out great for him. He's going to be a hell of a player, and the team's going to root pass on him, but. For now, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's it's the human interest. It's the human interest story of the draft. You know, I, I'm not just a sports guy, but um, that's it for the Jason chapter. Roll tape.